Hi. So during the weekend, I decided to take a moment to smell the roses, literally, right? I had them on my table. They smelled amazing. Their fragrance was just taking over the room. And I said to myself, you know what? I think I need to kind of take some time to just relax, let my brain breathe. So let me start this puzzle I got from Amazon. The puzzle is, uh, it has these beautiful sunflowers in, a, in a, this gray vase and it has a butterfly. It looked amazing on Amazon. It's a five, D painting and sitting there so calmly just trying to do this painting uh, for two hours at sitting there just pressing the little diamonds <laughs> into the painting talking to a friend to uh, via text I for some weird reason which is weird I started thinking about internal controls and different things that people need to remember right and they need to apply to regular day-to-day -day things and remember to keep thinking about the psychology of why people make certain decisions. And I thought to myself, wow, I need to do a really good job this semester in teaching students the, the, the terms, the examples, not just, you know, a lot of times we read things and we don't absorb them because we don't have a good example for them or we can't apply it to what we've learned. So, look at the blog post that I, that I have on this. Uh, it's going to be called uh, uh, Internal Control Success Starts With You. And basically, right, you'll see I'm going to be talking about these other these books that I bought because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a type A person. I'm always doing a lot of different things. I've gotten better at getting less on my plate and doing more with it, right? Because there comes a time you can you have to stop doing so many different things. You have to just get very good at what you're doing and make sure that you're making a good impact. Uh, it's not always the case that you have those choices, but when you do, you should take, take them, right? So I bought these books because I was on LinkedIn and I saw a person who is a functional doctor and who basically talks about how you use food to help you, to keep yourself and energize yourself and keep you as lively as possible and energized for your day, right? And he, I ended up listening to a podcast episode of his and, you know, I, I listened to the episode, then another episode started and it was talking about a uh, nutritional psychologist. So that was psychiatrist. So that was pretty interesting. And so I got her book too. And what does all this have to do with internal control, right? You have to trust your gut feeling. If you feel that something is wrong, it probably is wrong. Just because you don't have years of expertise doesn't mean you should discount your feeling. Because sometimes it's just that feeling that's going to get you to realize something is wrong and you're going to investigate it. Also, I don't know about you, but I had one nutrition class throughout my, all of my schooling. And college is stressful. And we're, we're living in challenging times. We have distance learning. We have all these things going on. So sometimes, yeah, we have to take care of ourselves, right? So think of, you know, when you talk about to nutritionists, they talk to you about um, making sure every meal has good fats, good carbs, and good proteins. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but the past when I was younger, I, you know, I used to have donuts and coffee to make sure that I could stay awake for my late class. And that ended like a nine something. And it was challenging because I thought that I was doing all the right things, but there were days I wasn't energized. Uh, so in this profession, you have to stay energized, whatever that means to you. And it has to be some type of balance and everything has to work in harmony. So forget about those books for the moment and forget about the puzzle and forget about the flowers. But check out the, the blog where I talk more about what it is that you need to remember for, about internal controls. And how you're going to make sure that you really are paying attention to the things you need to pay attention to because we live in a digital age, but not every client or every company is going to be as digital as you would like it. I like to say that that puzzle is like the glass brochures that you see clients give you. Uh, they've, they've had consultants come in. They've had people who are highly qualified to come in and give them the best practices. Occasionally, it's cookie cutter solutions. 
or someone who's bright and, and available to work on this project internally has set up all of these policies. But the policies that you were told uh, may not be the policies that are actually in place. So it's like when I went on Amazon and I was checking out some books and I saw this puzzle and it just drew my attention and it looks so beautiful, right? It looked like Picasso did it, right? So when I opened up my package and saw they rolled up this canvas and it was full of little things inside, I, 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 I you know, I felt a little disappointed, right? I was expecting something else. Uh, and, and I expected it to look different, but I'm still going to work on all these pieces. And just like that puzzle, I spent some time preparing it, uh, working on it. I spent like two hours and change on a Saturday night working on it because we have all the social distancing. There are a lot of places that are closed. I can't just go out and, and hang out as I would have liked to. Um, in this profession, when you're working with controls and all, you have to make sure you're managing your project you're assessing the situation and you plan accordingly because a lot of times people feel that they have all this, all this time and they can figure it out later, but you can't, you can't do that. You can't just figure it out later. You have to make sure you have all the things you need and that what you have is what you need and then assess how long it will take you and what other resources you'll need. Like for example, with that painting, I need a little pen to push in the little diamonds and I needed some glue and I thought the glue wasn't there, but it was so tiny it was there. And I also needed to make sure that I didn't press on the table and all the beads were going to fall on the floor, right? So I took two hours and I didn't finish even 10%. If you work with other people and they're not very good with project management and time management, you'll be pressed for time to finish things quickly. And if you don't have good templates, if you don't have good examples and a good foundation of understanding what it is that you need to pay attention to and dig deeper into, you may come into some problems, right? Because a lot of times clients try to rush you. And when I say clients, it could be internal clients and external clients. So all of that to say that, yes, when it comes to internal control, success starts with you. You being able to trust, trust your gut feeling, to communicate with others, to understand what's really in place, to understand how long really some tests are going to take you. And luckily for you, there's a lot of technology out there that can save you a lot of time. So that as long as you're thinking critically and you're preparing, you'll be able to do more work quicker, right? You won't have to do as, ma as much manual work as in the past, but you always have to know and be aware of what you need to know or, or what you don't know. So just be mindful that success starts with you.